Today we're working on a Ford 4600. The problem is, is with the clutch not wanting to disengage. So this isn't mine, it's for a friend. I'm pretty dang confident it is not a adjustment issue. So we're just gonna split it in half and see what's up with it. But before we do that, I'm gonna pull this panel off and the panel on the other side, we're gonna pressure wash. Pressure wash it off, a lot easier to work on something that's clean, so. Let's uh, get to doing If y'all see or not, because I can't. Actually, I think that's the wrong side of the socket. It won't take the battery out of the Alright, that's loose. Still don't know if the muffler is going to come on. Probably not. Usually the only way these come off easily is if they've been off recently. So pretty much all splitting all tractors is about the same. They're usually made for everything to come off half and half. So this one looks very straightforward. Some of them got a lot more stuff. When you got a loader and a whole bunch of other stuff on it, it's more of a pain, but this looks pretty simple. So I'm gonna start with taking this panel off and see where we get from there.
had a little mouse house in here. How do y'all keep mice from getting into equipment, vehicles, and stuff that's parked for a few months? Because this ain't mine, but this happens to me on like all my stuff. You leave it sit for a couple months, come back, and there's a mouse nest in it. I put out poison for them, I set traps for them, and I kill a lot of them, but I still have this problem like crazy. All right, all the fuel's done draining out. So I'm gonna pull the fuel tank off. I don't think you actually need to. I just wanna pull it off so I can see to make sure everything's ready to be split. So I got the little instrument cluster and all the wires, they'll stay on this side. So we'll take that off, pull the starter off and we're ready to split this in half. So let's see if we can get this off. I was gonna take this all the way off, but this nut's pretty rusted on here and I don't wanna spin that out of the starter. I guess it's time to get this thing cribbed up and take some bolts loose and break her in half. Okay, I got me a bottle jack and then just a jack stand. The wheels are chalked on both sides and don't forget wedge some blocks under here because this engine, once it comes loose, it's gonna wanna tip to either side. Not a big deal on a small tractor, but on a big tractor, it's a lot bigger of a deal. That's all that's left. Take some bolts loose and I gotta put the jack under the front.
break this one. Okay, Gordon, my gap, either the front or the back, one of the two needs to go up a little. Something wrong? Should be free now.
how sticky that is. That's gonna be heavy. That's gonna be real, real heavy. Oh, it didn't fall. There it is. I believe this uh, rear main seal here I mean, there's there's oil up here though so I hate to say that that's our smoking gun but I mean it's dry all around the uh, transmission so I don't feel like that seal's leaking. I'm gonna drain out the transmission oil on this because it looked pretty milky. Plus I have the transmission input seal out. Mm. Hit the pan. Yeah, you see that is it's not supposed to be that color. How much this thing holds. Alright, got my new throw bearing. Here's the old one. So, to make this easier, I had this in the freezer all night, so this should slip on here really easy. Make sure you install this the right way. This flat surface needs to be pushing against pressure plate. And when that was in the freezer, Let's 
I'll do just a little low tap. Block of wood might be a little gentler. Is it bottomed out? I think so. Yep. So you don't have to freeze that. But it sure helps because whenever you freeze that, that shrinks that metal just a little bit and makes things go together so much easier if one's warm and one's cold. Don't don't heat up a bearing though, you'll bake the grease out of it. So now new throat bearing that's supposedly heavy duty when it feels good. It's all it is. Pretty noisy, I don't know if you can hear that. Flywheel resurfaced, and after watching them do that. I will never change another clutch without having the flywheel resurfaced. It's funny how these things weird, wear in weird. When they're machining it, you see like, you'll have like a low spot and you would think it'd all be even, but. Anyways, they resurface that. It's like new, remanufactured uh, pressure plate and clutch. They even had the uh, clutch alignment tool. That place was uh, H&S Clutch Rebuilders. Oh, there's a phone number. If you're, it's in Johnson City, Tennessee. So, I mean, that's about a two and a half hour ride for me. But they had me in and out in like 45 minutes. So, no complaints there. Just buy new because it's well made. But when it's like something like this, they they were actually cheaper than buying new. Plus, I would have still had to have the flywheel resurface. So, anyways, um, I'm gonna put this pilot bearing in the freezer just so it goes in easier i'm not putting all this together today but i got a new rear main seal in i'm still waiting on this transmission input shaft seal i'm waiting on parts i'm gonna go ahead and change i got a new fuel pack for that because that one does not turn off the fuel yeah it looks like the same thing this off of here or not i don't know oh that wasn't that bad Which way was that turned? It's like that. somewhere right in there.
think they could have made this thing any heavier. And for these, you want red Loctite on them. Don't use any other color. I don't care what the manual says, you put red Loctite on them. And never have a problem. If you have to take them out, you can still take them out. It ain't that big a deal.
All right, I got the new seal in for this transmission input shaft. So it had an old gasket here. I'm just going to use some of this gasket maker. Put it all the way around it here. We should be ready to put the two halves back together. This is usually the most difficult part.
All right, I'd like to reseal this valve cover too while I'm working on this because there's oil down the side that I figure it won't hurt nothing. I'm already here. All that grease could vary. I had to drain the oil out, change that rear main seal. I guess I could have just done like a few quarts, but it's like I'm already this far. Might as well change the oil. I have no idea how much this thing holds. Man, this funnel kind of sucks. The transmission fluid is topped off and put the fuel back in it. So let's see if we can bleed this. I'm pretty sure that's a bleeder there. That should be the one that holds the whole cartridge on. I should be able to open up this pet gog. Does it have a hole in it? Yeah, it's got a hole in it. That's a bleeder. I 
And it should, because this fuel, I had to drain it out through the fuel filter, so this is empty. And that'll put a big air spot in that. Create a problem, so. It should gravity bleed. Oh, and there it is. All right, the rest of the fuel system should be fine. Okay, yesterday when I pulled this out, I pulled it around the house and it started smoking, acted like it was getting hot, so I shut it off and let it cool down, drove it back down here and flushed the coolant out twice 
probably should record that but it you just take water and flush it out both ways got a bunch of crap out of it then i filled it up with water got it hot flushed it again that's been sitting here a few hours it's cool to the touch so now i'm gonna put antifreeze back in it i replaced the thermostat i pulled the thermostat out when i flushed it now i'll put a new one in so hopefully that solves the issue i also pulled this cover off and pressure washed the radiator there was some some mud and stuff in it so that definitely didn't help so now let's put some new coolant in it I always buy the concentrate. I think it's cheaper than buying the pre-mixed. And then you just add distilled water. Depending on how you're mixing it. Usually, in most cases, it's 50-50, so... And it shows it's full. So now I'll run this thing a little bit and see if it does anything weird. Before I forget, I'm wanting to cover this whole ceiling in license plates. So if you have an old license plate, new license plate, any license plate you want to send for, for every license plate you send me, I'll send you one of these stickers. The P.O. box is in the description. I'm going to call this one a success. I've had it running for a little over an hour now, rode it around a little bit, and it don't seem to be overheating. Everything seems to be working as it should, so I'm going to send it home to its owner and should get some use out of it. I'm gonna hit all the grease fittings on it real quick, but that'll pretty much wrap up this one. Y'all have a good day, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.